India's biggest third new aircraft carrier will be a superpower aircraft carrier, a modern carrier and a game changer for the Indian Navy. Well, the Indian Air Force unleashed its swarm drones against China. India's Navy Chief Admiral Karambir Singh, he has been advocating three aircraft carriers for India so that the two operationals at all times. On the other hand, General Bipin Rawat, the Chief of the Defence Staff of India, has openly argued that the Indian Navy's priority should be submarines, not aircraft carriers. However, the CNS remains deficient. On the eve of Navy Day on Thursday, he told the press very categorically that the Navy believes that the aircraft carrier or the new aircraft carrier or the third aircraft carrier is great necessity. Further speaking about the third aircraft carrier for Indian Navy, the three-carrier-based force structure for the Indian Navy has been accepted in principle till the CDC or the Chief Defence Staff of India raised question about its feasibility. Indian Navy currently operates one carrier the 45,000 ton INS Vikramaditya procured from Russia, with the second but indigenously built 37,500 ton INS Vikram are also to undertake early next year. Both are ski jump carriers, but the Indian Navy regards the planned third and indigenously built flat top 65,000 ton INS Vishal with superior power projection capabilities as vital for its ever enlarging role in the Indo Pacific or the Indian Ocean region. The Chief of Defence Staff and Chief of Navy divergence over the career seems to have both financial and strategic dimension. Financially speaking, India had a bitter experience in acquiring Vikramaditya, which was a refurbishment of the career Groshaw. The Russian hiked the originally agreed price of $974 million to $2.35 billion and then took a 45 MIG-29 aircraft and additional modification to raise the overall price to something in between $6 to $7 billion. The Vikram is about to cost in the range between 10 to 11 billion dollars. And if India goes ahead with the planned Vishal, then the ship, along with the likely aerial components of F 18 ER Rafale, will probably cost an order of 16 to 17 billion dollars at current price over a period of at least 10 years. Will the Indian economy further hit by the COVID 19 and the economic recession after three decades? Can it afford the sum? That's the question is all more relevant when the Indian Navy, which has only about 15% of the total defense budget of the country in the recent years, has a long list of other and more vital requirements for the Indian Navy. As it is in India's defense budget allocation over the last two years has been lower since the early 1960s, and now the COVID-19 impact on the near Russian of economy has made the things worsen. Strategically speaking, the debate is over whether without a third carrier, the Navy can be cost-effective and yet remain an effective force with a powerful punch. General Rawat thinks, with the powerful and the credible submarines, the Indian Navy can very effectively counter both the China and Pakistan, India's two principal adversaries. Along with the Indian Navy, the Indian Air Force has revealed its little swarm drones. It is a concept where a large cluster or many cluster of unmanned area vehicles or drones or UAVs are flown together in a contested or hostile airspace in order to confuse the radar with a much bigger image of an actual target and achieve their assigned object. China has already made rapid advancement in deployment of its military drone swarms or their UAVs. This year, the country released a video of a barrage swarm truck mounted system tested for its military and is the first practical use of such system on this scale anywhere in the world, except US. So what do you think of India building the third new superior aircraft carrier while the Indian Air Force is unleashing its swarm drones against China in the border areas? Indian Air Force conduct massive nighttime military drill in Ladakh region to show off strength against China. US military will stand with India against China in any situations, says the US government. After the India and the US, Australia is going to ban Chinese apps. The U.S. 
Meadows has said on Monday by a top officials from the White House, Mark Meadows, Chief of Staff of U.S. Uh, the message is clear. Our military might stand strong and will continue to stand strong, whether it's uh, in relationship to a conflict between India and China or anywhere else. All right. He said this after deploying the two U.S. Navy aircraft carrier to South China Sea to boost U.S. presence in near China's borders as the tension between India and China were rising. While well, the India and China border talks with both their ministers on Monday were going on about the Galun Valley situation in Ladakh, both countries agreed to pull their troops for just one kilometer from their respective LAC to their LAC. But India is far from its LAC than China. As China stands very close to the LAC, they can reach into Indian lands in minutes than India can stop China. As even the pullback has happened, Indian Air Force conducted a nighttime drill in Ladakh with its MAG-29 jets, Su-30 jets, Apache helicopters and heavy lift helicopters in the mountainous terrains amid the troops pullback. Indian military will stand in high alert, ready to face any surprise move by the Chinese if it does. The retired Indian Air Force Vice Marshal said to an Indian news media that India is fully prepared any time to face any Chinese surprise moves. Also at the same time, China conducted a daytime military artillery exercise in Tibet yesterday. Looks like both are still showing off their powers and the situation seems to be same as before, maybe. While India has already banned Chinese apps in India, US and Australia are following India's path. Yesterday, the Defense Minister of US, Mike Pompei, said US is looking into banning TikTok, WeChat, and other Chinese apps in the US for national security reasons. Also, Australia is now thinking on doing this. Meanwhile, TikTok has said it will move out of Hong Kong due to the situations in Hong Kong and they don't have any ties or sharing any data with PLA or the Chinese government. Even after India's ban on Chinese apps and the strict review of Chinese investment into India, Chinese businessmen are looking into invest in India heavily. Also in the mid-April, India's stock exchange disclosed or reveal Chinese People's Bank of China, which is a central bank of China, has 1% share in HDFC Bank and small shares in other Indian companies. So what do you think of US military fully standing with India against China in any situations? Is it good or bad for banning Chinese apps and scrutinizing Chinese investment in India, US and Australia?